Welcome to MAKE, Hands-On Intro to Engineering Design, a course taught at the University of South Florida. In this video, we are going to introduce some basic assembly concepts. Hello, today we are going to be discussing assemblies in Autodesk Inventor. If you recall, assemblies are collections of parts that have useful relationships called constraints applied between them. Uh, these allow us to create relative motion between the parts or to create rendered images or even to test for interference uh, when simulating the motion of a part. If you can see on the screen here, uh, we have a part that was, uh, uh, I'm sorry, an assembly that was made in Autodesk Inventor. Um, it is a demonstration piece we use to create a simple uh, 3D printed part showing a piston assembly of a motor. So I'm going to show you today how to create this assembly. Uh, we'll assume that you've already created all the parts. And to get started, we'll just go down here into Autodesk Inventor. We'll click on the New uh, button to bring up the New File dialog. And then in today, instead of selecting the standard part uh, template like we have been doing, uh, we're going to go down here and select um, the assembly part. Uh, I'm sorry, the assembly file. Uh, and this will allow us to create a standard assembly, and we're going to use the millimeter uh, designation. So we'll click on that and hit create and this will bring us uh, into the assembly environment. If you notice the ribbon tab selected is no longer the 3D model that we had been using in the part environment it is now the assemble tab used for the assembly environment. This gives us uh, some common tools that we need when creating assembly. So let's begin. We first go uh, by clicking the place component and this will bring up a file open dialog and uh, we're going to place our first part. When placing the first part you always want to place something that's not going to have any motion so you can ground it and then reference all of the other parts to this. Um, so we can click on the housing.ipt, this is the part that I had created previously. Click open and this will bring the part up. We can change our view so you can see the part and now I can move this around in three dimensional space and if I were to left click it would place an instance of the part. What I'm going to do though is to right click as it's the first part and select place grounded at origin. This will place the part as it says grounded and at the origin and allow us to reference uh, this location for other parts. To get out of the place part uh, mode just push escape and it will put you back into the standard assembly environment. So as you can see, our part has been placed. If we grab it, it will not move around in space. Um, and you can tell that it is grounded by the small ground symbol next to the mouse pointer. So now what we can do is go up and place our second part. What we're going to do now is place the part that represents the crankshaft. We'll click on it and select Open. And this will bring us the part in 3D space. And to place the instance, I'm just going to place it arbitrarily. I'm going to left click. And then I'm going to push escape to get out of the place part mode. So now as you can see, the part is just floating in space and we have to apply constraints to it to place it in the proper location. So to apply these constraints, we're first going to go up and click on the constrain button. That's up here in the assemble tab. Let's bring up the cons place constraint dialog. The place constraint dialog uh, allows you to select the parts you want to apply the constraint to as well as the type of constraint and other settings um, regarding your assembly. So what we're going to do is um, select the two faces that we want to be uh, mated and um, Inventor will try and select the best constraint available for us and it's usually pretty good in selecting the constraint that you would like to apply. So what we're going to do is select this, uh, this interface of our uh, crankshaft. We'll click here if you notice, um, you can see the center line pop up. Uh, this indicates that we are selecting the circular surface. We can go over here and select the surface that we want to mate this part with. Click that, and if you notice, the parts have been now snapped together. We can click OK, and you can test out the relationship that was applied between these. You can see that the part is now concentrically around the post in the housing, but there's no constraint limiting the vertical motion. You can get a better idea of this. You can see that it's clearly around that pin and can rotate. But 
it is not confined to that surface. So now our next constraint that we have to apply must be to mate this top surface of the housing with the bottom surface of the crankshaft. So what we're going to do, select constrain. I'll we'll select this bottom surface and this surface. As you can see, they are now mated together. If we click OK, we can zoom in and you can see the crankshaft can no longer move vertically, but it rotates very cleanly around that post in the housing. So this is the, the kind of motion we want. Now, we can continue by adding the next part. This is going to be the piston itself. We'll select it and click open. Again, this brings the place part uh, mouse icon up. We can place the part and hit escape. Again, the part is now placed arbitrarily in space, and we have to apply the constraints to it. First constraint I'm going to apply is to mate it with the surface, and this will allow the piston to slide uh, only on the upper surface of the housing. So we're going to select that surface. We're going to select the bottom surface here. Click OK. If we go and examine this, we can now see that the part moves cleanly only on the surface of the housing, or this face of the housing, but as you can see, still comes in contact with parts of the housing that we don't want it to. So we have to apply a few more constraints. Go up and constrain again. We'll mate this edge with this edge, and it conveniently turned the part around for us. We can click OK, and now we can see the motion of this part is restricted to the groove that has been cut into the housing. That is the motion that we desire, so we can be done uh, adding the constraints to that part for now. And finally, we will get the last part, and this is the connecting rod. We'll click OK. Again, standard procedure now. We will click uh, to place the part and then click Escape. And now we have to start applying constraints to the connecting rod. So we will constrain first this hole to this hole. Click OK. You can see the motion is uh, starting to be formed properly. Again, we can connect this inner surface to this surface. Now you can see all of these holes are concentric to each other, so the motion is almost correct. All we need to do now is to connect the top surface of either one of these parts to the bottom surface of the connecting rod. Click there and there. We can select OK. And now we have the motion fully defined for all of the parts in the assembly. And this is really giving us the motion that we desire. If we take a look from above, And that concludes the uh, assembly tutorial. This concludes our video. Thanks for watching.